Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our next example of how to use L'Hopital's rule in order to solve a problem like this, where we take the limit as x approaches 0 of the inverse sine of x divided by x. Now, if we place the limit in for x, if we substitute in for x, what do we get here? Well, we get the inverse sine of 0 divided by 0. And of course, when the inverse sine of 0, when we take the inverse sine of 0, we get 0. So this becomes 0 divided by 0 which is an indeterminate form. That's why we use L'Hopital's rule. The idea is here is to take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the denominator, and then again plug in the limit as x approaches 0. So how do you take the derivative of the inverse sine of x? Let's come over here. We have the function f of x is equal to the inverse sine of x. Now, if we let x equal the sine of x, and we plug that in here, then f when x equals the sine of x, that is going to be equal to x, of course, because the inverse, this is the inverse sine of x, so we then put in the sine of x, we get x back. Now we're going to take the derivative of both sides. We take the derivative of the left side, we have f prime of sine of x times the derivative of the sine of x, which is the cosine of x, equals the derivative of the right side, which is 1. Now we want a relationship between the cosine and the sine. We know that the sine square of x plus the cosine square of x is equal to 1, which means cosine of x, cosine square of x is equal to 1 minus the sine square of x. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we get the cosine of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus the sine square of x. But here we took the assumption that sine of x equals x, so we replace the sine of x by x, so we get the cosine of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we plug that in here, so we get f prime of the sine of x times Instead of cosine of x, we write the square root of 1 minus x squared equals 1. And then if we move that down here, we have f prime of the sine of x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. But remember, we let the sine of x equals x, or x equals sine of x, so that means that f prime of x must therefore equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we come back over here, and then we said, well, if f of x was equal to the inverse sine of x, and we take the derivative of f of x, that is equal to the derivative of the inverse sine of x. So therefore, we can say that the ddx, the derivative of the inverse sine of x, must be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we can plug that in here, and we can say that if we take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator, we can then say that the limit as x approaches 0 of the ratio of the derivative of the numerator, which is 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared, divided by the derivative of the denominator, of course the derivative of x is equal to 1. Now we can go ahead and let x approach 0 and see what we get. This is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0, all divided by 1. Of course, this is equal to 1 divided by 1 divided by 1, which is simply equal to 1. And so the limit of the inverse sine of x divided by x as x approaches 0 is indeed 1. And that's how we do that.